Hello, my name is Philip Cloutier, President and CEO of Cartier Resources. We're a gold explorer focused in the Abitibi Greenstone Belt. And our flagship is the Chimo Mine Project, a past producer. And we've recently consolidated uh, a tremendous land package. And uh, the adventure continues uh, onwards to building more ounces. It does. The reason I'm calling you, Philippe, is that um, you've closed the O3 uh, mining deal. So uh, congrats on that. Um, but I need the so what bit. You know me. Um, so what does, that, what does that mean for you? What does it mean for them? Well, what it means for us is... Well, when we started this in 2017, we from 2017 to 2021, we delineated 2 million ounces. But obviously, we kept growing that resource as we neared the boundaries, the property boundaries. Uh, and, and, and O3, well, they had a resource on their ground. And they had the same issue where, you know, they would drill and as they got near the boundary, well, and traditionally in the exploration business, when you get to a property boundary, you know, everybody shies off from actually exploring there. And so there's a two or 300 meter swath of unexplored ground with a tremendous potential. This deal means that we eliminate the boundaries. We immediately increase the resource base on, on the consolidated ground. And then we can continue to explore without any constraints. And uh, basically also it gives us a new platform for growth because we've just acquired a land package that exposes us to 25 to 30 kilometers continuous stretch of the Cadillac Fault. Uh, and so immediate potential to keep growing the ounces from 2.2 to, to 3 uh, in the short term and even to 4 and 5. But, um, but in the, in the, you know, the next steps will be to try to evaluate the potential for uh, other larger lake Cadillac type targets along that stretch. Well, talk, talk, talk about the Cadillac Fault. You know, why, why is that significant? What, what, what should people uh, know? Need, what do they need to know about the Cadillac Fault? Why is it a big well, deal? Th what they need to know is it's it's got a historic, it's steep in mining tradition, over a hundred years of of prospective and productive, uh, you know, gold producing uh, potential. Uh, the same stretch of ground that we've recently consolidated. Well, from Valdor to Malartic is no less than, you know, a dozen mines and 30 to 40 million ounces that continues to grow at depth in the long straight. I mean, look at the, the Canadian Malartic partnership where they're, 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 they're mining from the, you know, the 10 million ounce pit right down into the Odyssey zone at depth. So it's a long lived, very prospective system. And I think that the partnership that O3 and Cartier have just established with this consolidated ground is a message that, hey, listen, from now on, we can, we can grow and, and, and join our efforts to, to keep building ounces on, on that part of the on that part of the fault. Okay, so tell me what you've got, what this consolidation um, has, okay, in terms of the amount of drilling that they've done, the amount of drilling that you've done, and what the plan is going forward. There's gotta be a drill program, um, presumably, to this. So tell us what you've got and what, you, what you'd like to do going forward. Well, listen, we drilled about 124 holes, just under 60,000 meters, delineated 2 million ounces. They did not have the benefit of the infrastructure, the past production, Nonetheless, they did approximately 20,000 meters uh, and uh, in, in, in um, you know, about just five or six million dollars of exploration work and did uh, confirm that there are additional Chimo-like mineralization over a 15 kilometer strike length. Uh, the combination of that, well, basically there are no more restrictions. There no, there's no more unhealthy competition. It's just one open playing field and and our immediate drill program will seek to grow the the two million ounces that we have their 200,000 ounces which will soon become three to four hundred thousand and grow that past three that's what it means and 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 that's why I think uh, we become a, a better or more a sexier target for the local gold producers. Okay, well, we'll talk about local gold producers and, and sexy in, in a minute, because I want to talk about what, what Agnico do um, on this. But let's get back to it. We, we, the, the deal structure itself is all, all shares, is, is that right? Yes, it is. Right, okay. So how's the bank balance? Because obviously you, you've opened yourself up to go, go explore along the Cadillac Fault, um, but 25 km, that's a lot, a big land package and you've got to use a lot of bit of work that you've got to do in terms of consolidating the data and working at this, this drill program um, that, that I mentioned earlier. So um, how's the money? 
and how you're going to allocate it. And given the current market conditions, do you hunker down? Do you slow the pace at which that advances or are you okay? Very good, very good line of question. Yes, we do have right now $5.5 million in the bank. With the investor rights agreement that we have in place, namely the Cisco Group and Nico Eagle, it's it sort of sets in motion an automatic financing process if both parties exercise their rights, obviously. Uh, the, the drill program that could immediately grow the ounce count from 2.2 past three, well, we have that money in the bank, right? Uh, because we are proximal to a mining camp with, uh, with um, you know, infrastructure and, and manpower, we get the better of the drill contracts. So we're able to advance the project, make it better uh, and more robust at a lower cost. It, you know, this, it, it made a lot of sense. O3 realized, I guess, uh, that if they continued exploring, they still wouldn't have the benefit of our infrastructure. And because we have the, the shaft and the underground drifts, well, the deposit on their ground, which is now 100% card says, just increases uh, the, the value of, you know, eventual the, the economic assessment that we'll be delivering for that whole project area. Right. So, so th this is sort of, I'm trying to remember, is a, a, average around 2.9 grams per ton? Is, is that sort of quantum, isn't it? The, it yes. Uh, underground bulk mining would be, that would be the mine grade. Right. Uh, the cutoff grades right now are 1.5 in the central zone and two in the north and southern corridors. Uh, the resource base that they had well, they used a much higher cutoff, but again, I must stress that they not they did not have the benefit of the infrastructure that we had, a bit, or, or else they probably would have employed a lower cutoff. Right. So, so, let's, so I'm, I'm just trying to get all the money um, sorted out here. Um, Agnico, are they going to? Because obviously, with O3 coming in, that's going to dilute them down from their whatever seventeen odd uh, percent. I mean, what are they going to do? Because to me. If they're not following the money, that tells me something. If they do follow that money, that's good news for you because that also tells me something, something quite positive. So what, what decision have they made? Well, they, since 2016, we have an investor rights agreement in place. As you may have seen today, we, we did release the fact that they have followed suit. They have exercised okay. their participation, right? They have readjusted their position to 17.7. So they are now leading the game in, in terms of ownership of, uh, of Cartier. I think a, a, of the Cisco Group still has 16.3%. Uh, so it sends, a, it sends a message. Obviously, the recently consolidated Agnico and Kirkland Lake is a much bigger company, uh, but it's in their backyard. So I, I'm very proud of the fact of the, that they continue to support this adventure. And, um, you know, what does that do? So when, when you say that they follow me, so I, I hadn't seen that document, uh, so that, that release actually. Um, so is that more, how much more money are we talking about? Well, their take is now $1.8 million. So add that to our 5.3 or 5.4. So we now have a cash position of over $7 million. Okay. So more than enough to address the, the, the drill program that I, uh, that I alluded to. Uh, okay, and then you you did have talked in the past to me about economic studies, right? And it's and it's and, and so we talked about it last year, and it's yeah. a question of timing and ti timing that right. Um, and does does that get delayed, or would it make sense to delay it given the the you know the consolidation you've just done with with O three and the work that you've got ahead of you because getting in you know, two million ounces kind of gets you people notice that you're around three million ounces is is people are really paying attention and giving your shareholder a share registry um, the, the bigger the better right so what, what's the what's the plan, timing uh, look like well, on that you're quite right we we launched a PEA in November of last year late last year and then immediately afterwards we started working on the consolidation. So as the engineers were, were, were constructing the PA and the tables, when I came in, when we announced the consolidation, they said, hey, hey, wait a minute, there's a deposit here. It significantly tips the numbers. We propose, I'm talking about the, the consultants, we propose that you, you delay it, you let us readjust the, the resource estimate, consolidate it with yours because there's a rule. 
you cannot have more than 143 NI43101, current NI43101 on a given project. So we're going to take the, the Norder West Deposit 43101 and the, the, the Chimo Mine 43101, mesh that together, and then from that, rebuild the P. Yeah, exactly. So yes, that will most likely be delayed. The next steps are to deliver a, a new resource estimate, uh, do some geochemical work uh, on, on, on the rock mass to initiate the permitting, the pre-permitting for, for eventual mine development, get the drilling program underway, the permitting we've just sent out for the permitting, and the PA will fall suit. So it's going to be a very logistically complex, but very, uh, a lot of value adding uh, process to the to the project. Well, it sounds like it sounds like the, the the money's the money's nailed. That sounds like a smart decision. Uh, you know, not just the, the combine the forty three one ones, but combine the forty three one ones and do more drilling and so get this to this three three million mark and and, and beyond. Um, I've got to ask though, um, it's a, it's a tough market, right? It's, it's it's been really tough for everyone. So I don't think you are any different from any other um, mining junior. Out there, the last six, seven weeks, brittle, right? And uh, quite frankly, all sectors yeah. <laughs> brittle uh, at the at the moment. Um, you've got the money to kind of you know carry on work. Good news, but I come come back to the fact that at, at this stage, you are predominantly a, a, um, sorry driven by the kind of re retail behaviour. You've kind of got these two big uh, holders on the register. Is that putting retail off um, and should it, you know, what? How would, how can retail play, you know, the the Carte resources game when you've got these two big companies sitting in their wings? Well, three now, quite frankly, uh, wondering, you know, what's going to happen here. So, is is there future growth? Is there future upside as far as the share price is concerned? Because, you know, sk skipping through to three million ounces for any other company would be pretty amazing stuff, but. Are you being held That's back great. by some of these by these big shareholders, or, or is there or is there a win for retail here? That's a very good angle. Uh, we, I, I discussed this previously. You know, in in project management, there's good, fast, and, and cheap, and you can only choose two. And we've decided to choose doing good work in the most cost efficient manner, and 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 not pay attention to what I call the devil's variable, which is fast. Fast is where uh, you drop the ball on ESG. Fast is where you you want to avoid accidents on work sites, and fast is where, especially post pandemic, you know people get you know get impatient and accidents will happen. You want to avoid that. Fast is where the armchair quarterbacks and the impatient retail bully management into making decisions, and, and all the while they keep moving the goalpost on you. So we've decided to focus on doing good work, good technical work. And, 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 and doing it the most cost effective, efficient way. And I think that's the best way to reward our shareholders. And I think that's what attracted the Cisco group and, 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 and Nagnico to, it's our signature work uh, uh, way. And that's, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, the retail, they will do what they do. I, I hope they will, you know, Believe in the Cartier story. I, I think it's good news. Really like the um, what you're saying about the, the the announcement and what we've we've seen. I think we had a technical um, interview with you um, in 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 March. Which well, well worth watching. I think our uh, analysts came away thinking this is a well-run company with with a, with a, with, a, with a strong team. Um, look, if if uh, you could let us know how you get on, um, you know, stay in touch. We we like hearing your story. We like the way you tell it. So. Um, thanks for making time for me today. Thank you very much, Matt.